Hey, what's up? If you're a coder or content creator, from illustration and printing to 3D and video, you need a powerful laptop with a good screen. If you add to that a stylish but understated design, a metal case, and a relatively lightweight, the machine in this review is a great option for you. It is lighter and quieter than most gaming laptops, more powerful and versatile than office machines with integrated graphics. Wow, that sounded just like an ad. But I really like this laptop. I will tell you why. Let's meet the third generation ThinkBook 16P. Design is important. And in this aspect, the ThinkBook 16P did not let you down. On the one hand, there is nothing revolutionary in the design of the notebook. The same cover, painted in two shades of gray, is a trademark of the series. And in some, there's a feeling that Lenovo's designers have taken the base from the gaming legions, such as the familiar screen hinges or rear case protrusion, and refined it in the style of the premium yoga lineup. For comparison, here it is next to my Legion 7. Yes, the same general principle of case construction, noble metal that cools the hand everywhere. At the same time, it is thinner, lighter and somehow more refined. The manufacturer managed to make the thickness less than 2 cm, and the weight fit into 2 kg. The layout of the ports also subtly resembles the legions. The narrowest connectors were left on the sides. On the left is a combined audio and card reader for full-size SD cards. On the right are two USB-C connectors. The one closest to the cooling grid is the version 3.2 Gen 2, and the second one is the newest USB 4. What is interesting, in addition to data transfer, both ports support power delivery 3.0 charging and connecting an external monitor via DisplayPort 1.4. In fact, the only difference is the data transfer rate. I plugged in my 100 watt gone charger to test power delivery. The result is similar to Legion. The laptop swears that the power supply is too slow, but it charges. If you do anything resource intensive at this point, the charge is still not long enough purely for the browser, word or TV show. But if you just leave the laptop alone, the charge is very fast. The most significant connectors are hidden in the back, so that the wires will not interfere unnecessarily, for example, the hand with the mouse. And how hidden? On the contrary, here they used a very handy trick from Legion 7, backlighting of ports marks. So even in the dark you won't miss it. I'll list them in order. From left to right two full-size USB-A version 3.2 Gen 2. At the same time, you can charge your smartphone from the second port even when the laptop is off. Next is HDMI. The version is not listed, but judging by the 8K 60Hz support, it's HDMI 2.1. In total, you can connect up to three external monitors to the laptop. And finally, the proprietary Lenovo power connector. Only those who like to connect the notebook to the local network directly through the cable will remain unhappy. The ThinkBook 16P is also lucky with the screen. In fact, it got the same IPS panel used in the Legion 5 Pro and 7. Yes, it's the same 16 inches, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 2560 by 1600 pixels resolution. There are two versions to choose from. A nicer version with a refresh rate of 165 Hz and brightness of 500 nits. And a little bit simpler version with the standard 60 Hz and still good 400 nits brightness. Here is the second version I have. The good thing is that both of them have 100% sRGB color space coverage and excellent factory calibration. Plus, the X-Rite utility, known to me from the same 7th Legion, which pulls the necessary color profiles from Lenovo servers. It's perfect for editing photos in Photoshop and coloring videos in DaVinci. I will not write the lack of full DCI-P3 coverage as a minus. For me it is really necessary only when working with HDR content. By the way, the screen can be opened 180 degrees. The company did not save money on the web camera. It is a module capable of writing full HD video. Plus there is a handy physical curtain. Plus, Lenovo offers a couple of additional video conferencing helper applications. It is also worth mentioning biometrics. The laptop is, after all, a working laptop. That is why there are several secure unlocking options on board. This is an infrared module next to the webcam to unlock by face and a fingerprint scanner built into the power button. 
In general, a complete set for every taste. The keyboard is a traditional Lenovo keyboard. Just the way I like it. Full-sized, with a separate number block and large cursor keys. Quiet, with a short stroke and a clear click. I think it's perfect for work. The key backlight is monochrome white with two brightness levels and an auto option. The touchpad here is glass, larger than the average. In principle, there are no complaints to it except for a slight backlash near the right key. Laptop speakers are located in the corners of the bottom. The volume is good, but the sound quality is just average. Purely a basic set. Finally, the hardware. This laptop has the most powerful processor of all the laptops I have tested so far. More precisely Ryzen 9 6900HX. 8 cores, 16 threads. Also, I got 32GB of dual-channel RAM of LPDDR5-6400 standard and 1TB M2 SSD from Micron connected via PCIe 4. SSD, by the way, turned out to be very fast. Since the model is a business model to say the least, there are not so many options to upgrade. The RAM is unsoldered here. But you can add another SSD to the main drive. Next. The discrete NVIDIA RTX 3060 is responsible for graphics and for wireless interfaces a Realtek module, providing Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. Let's move on to testing. The keyboard shortcut FN plus Q allows us to switch the modes of the notebook. All in all, there are three of them. Let's call them economy, automatic, and performance. All tests were done in the last one. So, synthetic CPU tests. Geekbench 1566 points in single core and 9347 points in multi core tests. Cinebench 1564 points in single core and 13292 points in multi core tests. Corona Benchmark rendered the test scene in 1 minute and 48 seconds. The overall system performance in both Office and Creative programs was measured by PCMark 10 test. All results are on the screenshot. It is not strange that ThinkBook 16P showed itself excellently in real tasks. Of course, I also played video with 4K Source in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Pure CPU performance is enough for everything. For such applications with active video card usage, for example exporting video from Premiere, powerful discrete video card helps me a lot. I don't know anything about coding or 3D, so I haven't tested it. If someone offers a clear, adequate methodology, welcome to the comments. By the way, about the graphics card. Since the laptop from the series of thin and light, the RTX 3060 power is limited to 80 watts. For work tasks this is enough, even with reserve. And for serious gaming usually take something like legions. Test scores are a little worse than the most affordable gaming laptop from Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. Synthetics first. 3D Mark Time Spy Test. The result is 7,734 points. Port Royal Test with Trace Route. The result is 4,445 points. Finally, the hardest test, Speedway. The result is 1,887 points. Well, although the machine is working, no one forbids you to play it in your spare time. And not only in solitaire. Took Cyberpunk 2077 as an example. On the one hand miracle did not happen. Maximum settings, that is, ray tracing ultra, in native resolution, of course, given with difficulty. Even with DLSS the average rate was around 30 frames per second. In the case of this laptop, I advise to choose full HD plus resolution, 1920 by 1200, and the impressive preset. These are the highest settings without ray tracing. That's when we get a comfortable frame rate around 60 frames per second. In general, the laptop is suitable for games. Although in the heaviest projects we'll have to sacrifice tracing or other graphics settings such as resolution. Interestingly, the graphics card has not reached its theoretical limit of 80 watts. I managed to squeeze a maximum of 73 watts out of it. In terms of temperatures, the ThinkBook 16P cannot be called cold. When the most powerful processor paired with a relatively powerful graphics card is installed in a thin case, you should not be surprised by the high temperatures. You can't cheat physics. Even with two high-performance fans and two heat pipes. 
In Cyberpunk, for example, my CPU heated up to 95 degrees. And in the OCCT stress test there were rare peaks up to 100. But at the same time, the notebook was stable at 60 watt, without trotting, i.e. without dropping frequencies. Noise level of cooling system at maximum load can be compared to a balanced mode in the legions. That is noisy, but as gaming laptops at medium speed, not at maximum. A couple of words about battery life. In ThinkBook 16P the battery as for a powerful laptop is quite average capacity of 71 watt asterisk H. In economy mode and dim screen brightness the laptop will last about 6 to 7 hours with office load or watching YouTube. Under load like video editing don't expect more than an hour and a half or two hours. In general, everything reminds the autonomy of gaming laptops. Included here is a medium-sized power supply for 230 watts. It seems to be similar to the one in the IdeaPad Gaming 3. In Lenovo Vantage you can activate fast charging up to 50% in half an hour or save battery life by charging only up to 60%. Prices and Conclusions ThinkBook 16P now costs from 1800 euros. For that money you get a fully metal body, a great screen and powerful hardware. And the rest of the nice little things. As I have already told in the beginning, it is a good working machine for creators and programmers. Who won't like it? Those who look for maximal productivity in games. You should look in the direction of legions. Or for those who need a quiet and self-contained office machine. You'll need something with more economical processors and without discrete graphics. If your budget can't handle it, you might want to look at something simpler like the IdeaPad 5 Pro. That's been it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.